We wamus me a les biat quememus, rumores que senum se weriorum, omnes unius aisti memus asis, soles ocide retre dire posunt, nobis cum semel oci dit bre vis lux, nux es perpetun adormienda. Da mi basi a mile den de centum, den mil alter a den secunda centum, den dus qualtera mile den de centum, den cum milia mota feci remus. Conterbabimus ila nesci amus, ot ne quis malus inve dire posit. Cum tan tum sciat esse basi orum. Let us live, my lesbia, and let us love, and let us value all the rumors of the rather harsh old men at one penny. Suns can fall in return. For us, when once the short light has fallen, one perpetual night must be slept by us. Give me a thousand kisses, then a hundred, then another thousand, then a second hundred, then immediately another thousand, then a hundred. Then, when we will have made many thousand kisses, we will mix those up, so that we shall not know, or so that no evil man may be able to envy, when he knows there is so great a number of kisses. Arguably the most famous of all his poems, Catullus's Carmen V is a passionate and detailed love poem addressed to the beautiful Lesbia. As we have discussed in class, Lesbia is not the woman's real name, but instead serves as an allusion to Sappho the tenth of the muses, and a woman who perfectly represents the qualities of beauty, passion, and intellect. The poem is divided into three distinct parts. Line one introduces the theme, Catullus's exhortation of love. Here he uses the hortatory subjunctives wiwamus and amemus as a hyperbaton surrounding male lesbia to present how he views her as the center of his universe. Lines two through six provide two rational but desperate pleas for why he and Lesbia should be together, and lines 7 to 13 serve to remove any objections Lesbia may have before she can even voice them. Scholar Ernest Friedrichsmeyer argues that this structure of the poem mirrors the act of making love. He says that line 1 serves as the proposition. Lines 2 through 6 represent the persuading and coaxing, the psychological preparation. With line 7 sets in the drama of love, moving with increasing intensity and excitement towards a climax in lines 9 to 11, and then quickly subsides to a state of calm and repose in the last two lines. Throughout the poem, Catullus uses sound, meter, and countless rhetorical devices to further intensify his passionate pursuit of lesbia. In lines 2 and 3, the poet uses the alliterative S sound to illustrate the scornful looks and whispers he receives while pursuing lesbia. According to scholar E.T. Merrill, the hissing sibilance of line two echo the hissing, snarling sounds of the rumores senum sewerium. The sibilance of the second line, in which the poet evaluates the rumores, emphasize his own disdain for these rather harsh old men. Catullus remains unperturbed, however, as is evident by the juxtaposition of omnes and unius in line three. Catullus also discusses the ephemeral and fleeting nature of life in his work, citing it as a reason for why he and Lesbia should be together. He employs the vertical stacking of soles, nobis, and nox in lines 4 through 6, as well as the chiasmic juxtaposition of brevis lux and nox perpetua to suggest the shortness of life, as well as to urge Lesbia to act on her emotions and feelings for him. Let's take a look at the meter in this collection of lines. Note the progressive shortening of syllables of Okidit Brewis Lux from 3 to 2 to 1 in line 5, and the elision of Perpetuna in line 6. In both of these cases, Catullus is contrasting the eternal nature of death with the frailty of life. Another interesting aspect of Carmen V is the urgency of Catullus in the second half of the poem. The alliterative anaphora of Dende. Dane, Dende, Dende, Dane, in lines 7 through 10, not only reflects the enormous number of kisses, 
but also greatly increases the speed of the poem. The elision of Milautera in line 8 and the double elision of Deindus Qualtera in line 9 add to this sense of urgency and portray Catullus as steadily running out of breath as he continues speaking. According to scholar E. M. Blakelock, to the critical and unsympathetic observer, like the Senes, this verbal outpour would seem silly and indecorous to the point of offensiveness, and certainly completely irrational. But this is just the point. What the poet expresses is not decorum and rationality, but passion, and every detail is designed to bring out this effect. Catullus also makes a number of references to business and finance, drawing parallels between the language of money and the language of love. He uses words like aistimemus and asis in line 3, and conturbabimus in line 11. Conturbabimus literally means to throw into confusion, but in this instance, the more applicable definition would be to go bankrupt or to cook the books, as we discussed in class. In this sense, Catullus is suggesting that he and Lesbia cheat their own limitations by stealing such an enormous number of kisses. Ultimately, Catullus's Carmen V is a truly powerful poem, in that it not only presents Lesbia with a deeply passionate and heartfelt exhortation of his love, but also sums up the ideas of Epicureanism and the ephemeral nature of life in just 13 short lines.